Hi, I'm Chad, and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks! Alright, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to place images and special considerations when we're placing various types of images. So go ahead and open up poster.indd if you don't have that open already. And let's just go to File, Place. And then in our support files, navigate to Photos, InDesign Support Files, Poster, and then Photos. And there are a couple options in here. Well, let's just select any of these really. Let's just select Cafe and then click Open. And I'm going to zoom out here pressing Control or Command minus. And if I click and let go, we'll see this is a very large file. Plenty of resolution uh, to be used across the entire page or spread if we wanted to. I'm going to press Control or Command Z a couple times to get back to this point here. Now once we know that it's large enough, we can actually just click and drag in an error if we want. If I click and drag, it will maintain that correct proportion width to height ratio. And we'll notice that X and Y, right where our cursor is, that's just the percentage. So really we don't have to place it first. We can actually look at that and make sure it's below 100%. So right now we're only at 28% of the actual dimensions, actual width to height pixels of this photo. And that's fine. We can place it at a smaller size than the original. We just don't want to place it at a larger size than the original because it can pixelate. So I'm just going to let go here. And then now we have our image. And we're going to be adjusting them later in the next lesson. But for now, we just need to get a couple photos on the page. Notice if I click and drag on the corner here though, the photo doesn't move with it, doesn't resize with it. That's because this is the frame of this object. So that's separate from the actual image. So I can bring it right along the edge there. I can use this to crop out part of the photo, or we can have the entire photo in it. So that's one way to place images. You just click and let go or click and drag on an area and it just brings it in and we can move it around like so. If you click and drag right in the middle though, uh, we'll move that photo in the frame rather than moving it around individually. So be careful just to click over on the edge a little bit, not completely on the edge because then we're cropping or resizing if we hold control or command. Uh, not right in the middle when it turns into that hand icon, but just around this area. So I'll show you how to turn that option off later if you want. But for now, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to actually create a couple graphic frames here that we can insert a couple photos into. So this rectangle frame tool here, let's go ahead and zoom in down at the bottom here. And I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to hold shift so it's a perfect square here. And so I've got one, and then I'm going to alt or option on the Mac, alt on the PC, click and drag, hold shift so it's just perfectly aligned here. Something like that. And I'm going to alt and click and drag again. And notice those smart guides at the bottom. We can see that this is a consistent spacing between, but I actually want this along this margin here. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit. And now I'm going to move this one holding shift. So it's right in the middle there. There we go. So now we have consistency as far as the spacing between these three. So consistent proximity. They're all the same width and height, and they're also aligned. And let's add another one up here. So this one I'm just going to bring up over here. Something like this. What about display performance? Remember earlier we placed this in. We right click on it, go to display performance, and then set it to high quality. Well, if we want everything to be high quality by default, we can go to edit, then preferences, and then display performance right there. And again, on the Mac, it's just click on Adobe InDesign, then preferences and then display performance. And we have typical as the default. If we do fast, it won't print out like that when we print it to paper or PDF, but it's just for better performance uh, so that the computer doesn't lock up or have to think for a long time when we're navigating through a bunch of pages. But for this one, it doesn't have too many pages, and at least on my computer, it should be fine. You can keep yours at typical if you want. I'm gonna set mine to high quality uh, for the default and then press OK. And then I don't have to set that every time. Now, if we make any changes in preferences when we don't have any document open, then that will set the
the defaults for the next documents, for all the documents that we open. But if we have one open, it only sets the defaults for this open document. So let's place a couple images in at the same time. So go ahead and go to File, Place. And we can click and drag around a couple. Or you can hold Shift, click on one and click on the other like that. Or you can hold Control on the PC or Command on the Mac. So I'm going to select this one this one this one and this one for now so the drink food meals and people and i'm going to click open and you'll notice there's a tiny little four near our cursor that's indicating that we're placing four images and if we don't want to place this one first we can press the left or right arrow on the keyboard so let's just say we want to place this one first i'm going to click there and then let's say this one and then this one, and then this one. So I have some images placed in here, but they're not cropped correctly. It's the actual image at the actual size, and these frames are not the same uh, width and height, obviously, not the same dimensions as these photos. That's okay, we'll fix that in the next lesson. I wanna show you different ways to place images, though, in this lesson. So go ahead and go to File Place, and instead of selecting one of these JPEGs, there are JPEGs and PNG files, that are typical raster files, but here's a PSD file. So if we place this, it would place it just in the state that it is in Photoshop, meaning whatever layers are visible in Photoshop, it would be visible in InDesign. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open, and I'm gonna click and drag, and there's the image, no big deal. The thing is this has layers though, where this is actually on one layer by itself, and then the background layer is the whole photo. So what if we wanted that? Well, we could go to Photoshop and toggle the visibility of the background layer so that only that top layer showed. But another way is to use import options. So go to File, Place, and then click on Coffee again, but don't double click on it. Just click on it once and then click on Show Import Options right here. Then click Open. And then now we can adjust this. So we only want this background copy layer to be placed in. So let's toggle that background layer with the eye icon just as if we were in Photoshop and there are some other options in there too we don't have a clipping path in there so that's grayed out for the image but layers is what we want to adjust here so go ahead and click OK and then now when I click and drag if you got just that transparent or partially transparent PSD file so PNG on the web we could use a partially transparent file but in InDesign, we don't have to use a PNG. We can actually use a PSD file. So now we could put this wherever we want in the design. So I'll just leave it there for now. Another example of using the import options is when we insert a multi-page document, for example, a PDF or an Illustrator file. So go ahead and go to File, Place, and then under Poster, go to Illustrations, and then select Illustrations, and make sure Show Import Options is checked. Click Open. And now we can indicate how many pages of this document we want to place in. So if this was a PDF, it'd be the same thing where we can insert a range or just specific pages. So I'm going to bring in both pages here or just range one to two, or I could just click all and then click OK. And then first we'll be placing in this graphic, which is just a quick illustration I made years ago. So if I wanted this in here, I could just click and drag like that. And then by default, we have the next illustration in there. Click and drag, and then there we go. I'm not going to necessarily use these in the design. I just wanted to show you an example of bringing in a multi-page document. How do you bring in more than just the first page? So just make sure Show Import Options is checked. So I'll delete those for this example. In your example, you're free to use those in this course. You can also go to File, Place, and then select another example here. For example, I'll click this coffee one and I'm going to make sure replace selected item is not checked in case I have something selected and I don't want it to replace it. Click open. And so if I just click on top of one of these image frames that I've already placed a photo in, it'll just place it on top of it. And if that's what we want, great. But if it's not, let's just say we wanted to replace this photo here in there. We'd need to hold alt on the PC or option on the Mac and then click. And that's just a shortcut and that will place it in there and embed it in that image frame. So as long as you have a couple photos placed in here in a grid formation, you have four photos down here, one photo up there, 
We have the partially transparent photo here as well. We're going to be using with a design later up here. Remember to save your changes. Just go to File Save or File Save As if you want to name it something different. And in the next lesson, we'll be adjusting these, how these are fitting inside the frame and a couple more image options. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, I'm Chad, and this is a sample video tutorial for my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks.